big deal. Did I ever tell you about my uncle? That was a, uh, he was a coal miner and worked. Uh, uncle Ralph. No, yeah, I do have an uncle Ralph. That wasn't him. It wasn't him. It wasn't, it wasn't Uncle Ralph, but he worked up in the, the West Virginia coal mines. Okay. And it was it was real dirty, and um, they worked like like 18 hour days. It was crazy, and um, and uh, you know barely had enough money to just make make do with whatever was going on. Yeah. And um. Then he uh, um, he raped this boy in town, then went to prison. Black and white. We'll do some more talking. We'll do some more talking. We're black and white. Yep. Somebody stepped on the cable. That's what happens. Well, that's what you get for running the King Kachanga crap. I know. There we go. Step away. Walk away from it, Steve. I got it down. I'm tired of it. I just kicked it. Uh, hey, folks. We appreciate you. Let us know if Steve's mic sounds sucks. Does it You're sound right, sucks? Like that's what I told you. I'm telling yeah, you, Steve. Almost there. I'm telling you. Um, you guys, let us know if Steve's mic. Sucks. We've been having some mic. My mic. Uh, I, I know last week we had issues with yeah, Carl, but it, Carl's it a lo- doesn't sound good. Carl's a low talker. Then just do that instead. Hold on. No, let me let me listen for a minute. Shut up. All right. Just talk. Just don't talk. No, you talk. Be quiet. You don't need to be quiet. I'll be quiet. Oh, you want me to keep going? One. Steve says one. Somebody said they can't hear him. They can't hear you. Yeah, can't hear you. That battery must have died. We'll just have to do that. I thought you switched batteries. You gotta get close on it too. You switched batteries. I did, but it wasn't a brand new battery. It was out of one of my remote controls. Right. Uh, Found it on the street or something. Maybe, no, and then the floor. Okay, whatever. But we'll make I'll it work. i damn mic for an hour and a half. Yeah, that's what we'll do. Yeah, it says Steve I'm sounds 50. like he's outside or something. I'm so, like 53, yeah. so I get I get to, I get to be. <laughs> Somebody a said we can't. Mel Thelogian says we can't use that in case cameraman shows up. <laughs> Good call. Hey, cheers, everybody! Thanks for joining us and hanging out with us on a glorious Friday night. Oh, it's uh, it's, it's, it's summer officially, y'all. Absolutely, and uh, who doesn't love a damn Friday night? I couldn't wait to get to this Friday night. Oh, like it owed me oh, money. You think you couldn't wait? You think you couldn't wait? It's uh. I'm on vacation. For, yeah, I get yeah. 11 days off. That's baloney. So uh, I'm gonna enjoy that. Uh, what will we'll suck is uh, we're not gonna do a show next week. I'm gonna be on call. That's because I'm. You're gonna be on call. Yeah. Even though it's only been like four or five weeks since I was on call last, that's a separate conversation. Uh, but I'm, I can't do it. We're gonna. I, I got. I got shit to do. But I'm gonna get some time off for uh, the holiday, Fourth of July. And, uh, but uh, next week I'm gonna be on call, you know, so if I could, we're not gonna do. A show. I wasn't here last week because I had a gig, which went really well, by the way. No, that's right. But um, Carl was there. Funny thing is, uh, this is the first time I ever played, following a wedding at the actual bar. There was a wedding at the bar, oh. and I played. I, I played after that. I didn't play for the wedding because they would have had to pay me some extra cash. Sure. Anyway, uh, what I was gonna say. What was I gonna say? Damn fine though. Elefano. <laughs> what do you get when you cross an elephant and a rhinosaur? I don't know. Elefano. <laughs> and something on my head, too. Um, I got a substance abuse problem. I'm going to eventually need a little help with it. And I appreciate all you standing, eventually, standing, eventually. standing right, by not me. Right not right now. Okay. But I appreciate all y'all standing by me through my uh, turbulent times as I'm going through this issue with my wife. Mustache is sticky. Mm. Uh, hey, we lost a Prodigy, a one half of, uh, I know you're not a big hip hop guy. Yeah. Lost Prodigy from Mob Deep this week. That was a big deal. Uh, hardcore. Um, big time hip hop shit that was like for real shit. 
We only do for real shit hip hop on this show, not not the bullshit stuff. He was only 42, some uh, sickle cell uh, related causes. Messed up, man. That's too damn young. Two years older than my ass. Of course, I don't have sickle cell, but uh, um, you know, cheers to him, and I appreciate the music. Uh, pretty liquid cat. He was liquid. I'm gonna start saying that. Liquid. Yeah, bro's so liquid. So liquid, he was tight. Okay. That's how people talk, right? I think so. I've heard it before. So what you been up to? Um, nothing. I got some murders. I did some murders. I did some, um, what I do? Bought some video games. I got a, a 14, no, 13 tape, VHS tape set of WrestleMania. You got a money shot today. You got like a money Oh, man. Is it called, uh, Mike calls it the money shot yeah. he's got for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That, that's, that was pretty cool. Yeah, capitalizing on tragedy. tragedy. That's my well, specialty. It's been a little warm, but manageable. Yeah. Yeah. Cindy came and made landfall, but I don't think we're going to really feel anything from that. Yeah. I thought it might come up our way and like give us a bunch of rain for a couple of days. But oh, what's, where's my? Oh, I went to a graphic. I didn't mean to. You been on graphic the whole time? No, not this whole time. Okay, See, I was going to do my in the news graphic, but I forgot. I don't think I have it in here anymore. Mm, that's um, a shame. That's a damn shame because some of the stuff I want to talk about. So I'm assuming I can be heard now because I'm holding this mic. Yeah, I think so. Let's see if everybody, if anybody's squawking. Ain't Everybody's no squawking. About all oh, it yeah. says get on the mic, Steve. I'm on the mic. I've been on the mic. It's got to be close. Like I know this? That. Yeah. Like I'm seeing like a gig? Yep. Oh, Jesus Christ. Look at the levels. You can watch your own levels. I can watch your level. And now my level. But you know, mine's going to be overmodulated just because I'm on the mic like this. It'll sound good. <laughs> By the time you get the okay, final, then. it's all about the final. Don't check your preamp. It's all about the final. <laughs> Tube joke. <laughs> Tube joke. Okay, so the whole show, I'm going to talk like this. Yeah, if you, if you, if you J-talk, <laughs> everything's going to be a clusterfuck. But, uh, that's what, what are we watching in the alcove? Uh, this is WrestleMania 1's over here on the Atari. WrestleMania alcove. 1. Last week, Carl, we would love to have I saw Andre the Giant, the Giant won his match. There's Hulk and Mr. T. Hulk and Mr. T is a team, tag team. Look you know, it. you know them as plastic figurines, but this is the actual thing yeah, right here. Yeah, real deal shit. Um, yeah, Carl was here last week. It was cool, man. Hanging out with Carl. It's been a while since we hung out with Carl. That was a blast. Carl stayed the night, and he had to get up and go to an estate sale. I think he talked about on the show. Oh yeah. He did get what he was after. Um, his, what was uh, he looking for? His uh, grandfather's shotgun. Grandfather's ended, shotgun. Yeah, that wasn't ended up being willed. Was to this the his family. grandfather's estate sale? Yeah. Oh wow. So the, the stuff that wasn't like, hey, Steve gets the uh, drawer full of panties, and Billy gets the you know the lamp in the living room. If it wasn't specifically in the will, it was all up for grabs at an auction. So this gun that had been in their family for a couple hundred years was not on the list for some oh. stupid reason. So Carl drove up here specifically to go get that gun. And in the meantime, came over here the night before and got up at like 8 in the freaking morning and went to this estate sale down yeah, the road. Man. Uh, and got the gun. Um, had to spend for it, but he got what he came after. Also got uh, uh, his grandfather's stereo, which is like a Pioneer, or you no, know, Kenwood. We love, gun we love guns in North Carolina, yeah, by the yeah. way. From the 90s. Or so it's somebody like a, does. a great sound system and some great speakers uh, from the 90s. And he scored 90 for 80 speakers. He, he scored those for 80 bucks. So that's pretty cool. Okay. Uh, so it was cool. You think he would be given this stuff? It was his family. Well, it was stuff that wasn't on the list. They, they, they just they couldn't. Was he, was he on the list for anything? I don't know. I don't know. I don't get into Carl's personal details other than uh, stuff dealing with uh, his underwear set area. You, you got you got like an underwear area. And okay. I, I'm privy to that kind of stuff, but when it comes to personal family-owned firearms, that's something I'm left a little bit to the side on. Um, the sidearm? Traditionally. Okay. Um, but yeah, hey, do you know, you brought an LCD sound system record over here not too long ago, right? Um, yeah. You like that? I love it. We like the LCD. It's good. I almost brought it tonight. Maybe I, I did. I, I might have brought it. I meant to tell you, too, because they got a new album. Do they? Brand new album uh, called American Dream. It's going to come out, I think, in September. Um September 1, actually. I'll say this. They played two tracks on Saturday Night Live. At least that album that I have, the music fits well into this show. 
you know, the, I buy I like certain t- certain times I'll buy something th- thinking it m- this will play well in the show. You know, yeah, it, yeah, yeah, I don't want to be driven by that by my by my life picks. You know, sure. because I, you know I'm, what am I here? I'm here for a few hours every week. Yeah, and I mean I've got lots of like stuff like Keith Jarrett, which I like listening to. You're but not going to play. I'm that. not going to play it on the show. Um, I just swamp that. And there's other stuff that I have that I specifically have for the show. You can swamp it whenever you want to. Ain't no rush. Um, but yeah, that's cool. I thought that I, I enjoyed that. I wasn't familiar with them, and then you brought that record over, and I, I remember really liking it. Um, this is an this is an so let me ask you something. Apparently, this week, um, they have changed the songwriting credits for Imagine to include Yoko officially. And apparently, back in like '80, Lennon was like. He was being all macho when he first wrote it and only put his name down, but it was to- should totally be her. Are you all right with that? Uh, I'm fine with it. It's just funny. I, I have to think about, like, why did that come about? That had to come about from the Yoko Ono estate, or at least That's the... That's what I was the, thinking. Like, I why? mean, why would people even bother with that? So I, I'm fine with it. I mean, if, it, if, it's, if it's the honest truth, it's the honest truth. And, yeah. And let it be. But, it, Okay. But was it? You think it really was the honest truth, or is he throwing, sure. or is he throwing his wife a bone? No. Throwing his tambourine banging, always no. around when we're no, playing I music. Mean, wife a bone. She was a great. She was a, a, a super great influence on his, on his direction. I don't deny that. No, you sure. Can't, you cannot deny. Sure. That. Um. So yeah, that was pretty neat. I saw when I was looking up all the shit, uh, CKY. If you guys have seen me wear the CKY shirt, probably. You know, I saw, I saw there was a show at CK. There's a, a, an art museum. No, CKY. It's C-K-Y. the Southeastern C-K-Y. Center for Contemporary Arts. And they have modern art and, and um, some really cool stuff. But at one point, when I saw, when I, when I talked to David Byrne, David Byrne had a show at CK. And when I, I interviewed him for the, for the news and went, went up going to the show, also during the show there was a, a, uh, an exhibit by Yoko Ono. Oh. And in the exhibit there was a phone. And at any time the phone might ring. Oh. And you pick it up and Yoko Ono would ask you something stupid. or <laughs> I don't know what she would do, but it was that was that just funny interesting. You know, it's funny you mentioned that because I, I wanted I posted if you guys. Um, the um, the Girl Man Record Night Facebook page. For some reason, the graphics you, not loving. You know where they first met. I'm gonna talk. I'm gonna say a little more about yoga. Whatever. I could give a shit. But where they met was um, the uh, was Chinese called? buffet. The 24 hour. It was in the London Underground. I forget what they call it. Ching Chong Chow. Pink Floyd was playing. The Sid Barrett days. Pink Floyd oh. was playing in the London. Sid Barrett days. And and. I think Yoko had a display in the underground, and it was a ladder, and John got on. Because if you see, the, like, the early films of, of Pink Floyd, and I think maybe on Sid's first trip, that, that video, there's London Underground video of John Lennon shows up, and, you know, he's like, everybody's like, oh, it's John Lennon or whatever. Yeah. But he, he goes, and there's a, there's a Yoko Ono display, and he climbs the ladder, and I think on the roof... She had just like written the word "think," uh-huh. and it like like blew his mind or some bullshit like that. So I think that's might have been where they first met. It was, it was through that. Nate made the point: uh, wasn't Yoko already receiving money from publishing on this? Oh, she probably just offici- so. probably so. She just didn't officially She's have a songwriting credit. I mean, you get you get money for owning the rights to the music, but you probably. Also get- money for songwriting and i think at this point it becomes more of an ego thing with the songwriting credit than the money do you really need the money does her estate need the money i mean who needs money probably just wants the credit or not well yeah i mean wants the credit enjoys the credit looking at looking ahead when you look ahead to a song like imagine i hear it i hear it at least twice a year in a unitarian fellowship on a sunday i hear it Time and time again at, at different events, different things. Time it is one time. of those songs that's going to live forever, and I think people realize that. Yeah. And if you can get your name on it, then get your name on it if it belongs on there for have sure. You, have you heard the uh, the jump? Imagine mashup. You have heard that, haven't you? Jump. Van, Van Halen's Halen's jump. 
I think I have. I get up. And nothing gets me down. Yeah. It's, nice. it's beautiful. So they use, if the, they not, use those tracks you can hear on YouTube of just David Lee. Yeah, if, if you've not heard that mashup, go look it up on YouTube. It's, it's amazing. I love that shit. It works so well. It's fun, and then it's fun and funny, and you're kind of just goofing on it, but then you realize, like, this is actually really damn cool. Y'all, it's summer. Go have a little fun. Go have a little fun. Do something for yourself. Treat yourself, fool. Uh, hey, like I was saying, new CKY I'm, I'm album. Leaving, I'm leaving on Sunday to go to a baseball game. On a jet the, plane. And then I'm going to see a bunch of idiots argue about health care. Nice. About that? Won't that be fun? And the Congress? Sounds like a job. Congress? Yeah. Oh. Get, take some pictures and send them to the no comment. station. <laughs> um, see, new CKY album. Big CKY fan. I played with CKY back in the day. Uh, we watched the videos, you know, where they're uh, the jacket, pre jackass stuff. Um, and uh, now the Darren guy is gone. Chad Ginsburg, the rhythm guitar player, is now the lead guitar player and the uh, singer. Yeah. Uh, Jess Margera still playing drums. Bam's brother, of course. Got a new album, released a single, uh, checked it out. Pretty good. Not terrific, not sucky. Uh, but the new album is out. Recorded in Rancho de la Luna. Okay. Uh, in Joshua Tree. the Street. desert. Yeah. Uh, so that's uh, Dave Ketching's um, studio where Jay's uh, communicated with him a couple of times. Yeah. About recording with analog and stuff. Okay. Um, and so, yeah, and it's actually got Brent Hines from Mastodon is on this album. So uh, maybe worth checking out, especially if, you, if you're an old school CKY fan like myself. Uh, maybe, and of course, I love Mastodon. It'd be, be cool to check out what they've done together. Uh, I just I ran across that by accident. You know, and actually, by looking at this uh, list of stuff that came out today, I saw that I saw that uh, what we we're talking about the LCD sound system. Yeah. I saw the CKY, and like below that, I saw this band called Dying Fetus. You guys know Dying Fetus, like a death metal band. Sure. They're crazy. We played with these guys at this place called Fat City Deli in Charlotte, North Carolina. <laughs> um, they were big then, culty, but now they're probably bigger. But at the time, we played the show. It was a good show. We played with two kind of like, I don't want to say rap rock bands, but okay, rap rock bands. And then uh, Dying Fetus was the headliners. And we had this uh, black homosexual uh, singer that was with us right. at the time, doing some songs with us Cowboy. at the time. Cowboy. He was. He ended up Cowboy. being. Cowboy. And then all of a sudden, I start seeing a uh, guy show up with the jackets that had like swastikas and shit on them. Oh. And Cowboy's a fighter. He's probably the best fighter I've ever seen in my life. And I'm like, we we got to get this guy out it's of like here. Like Boy George, you don't fuck with him. We got to get him out of here. Like so we like left the show and like, it's like this is gonna be a problem because we started seeing an influx of in these skinheads. Skin yeah, yeah, a lot of them. Uh, and that's nothing we wanted to do with at that particular time. So we no. had to get out of there. So I did see Dying Fetus as a new album. So you guys go check that out. People really like them. I don't know. I've heard it. I've heard it. Okay, then. Let's talk about what we played. You know tonight. what's funny? Let me, let me interrupt oh, you right there. Okay. I, 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 I'll I, put I a finger something stupid I had a senior up. moment a while back. I couldn't remember what the hell I was going to say. Yeah. And what I was going to say was, was I wasn't here last week. You weren't here last week. during the time. Did you just remember the, that? Yeah. Because you said something about the, the studio out in, in the desert. Rancho de la Luna. Well, yeah. during that time, though, we were able to get together with Jay at his studio. We talked about that. You talked about last you, week? Yeah, we, we, yeah you okay. weren't here. You Sorry, weren't here. No, 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 that's all right. That's all right. We don't have your perspective. It, it was fun. I enjoyed yeah. it. And uh, I hope maybe during this time off, I can go back and we can yeah. maybe do some more some stuff in the studio. We so. need to do uh, over time. It could be. Uh, it's going to get better. Ten years. We could do a. This was very unplanned. Release an album like the Desert Session, but it'd be like. A, it may take us the, ten years. It'd be like the Dookie Session. Yeah. Call it something else. The Shed Sessions. Shed. McGregor. I forgot about that one. Remember that band name? McGregor with the tongue. The McGregor Turf Shoe Tongue as the logo. You know, what you know what I'm talking about? The McGregor Turf Shoes? No. From Kmart? McGregor Turf Shoes? Yeah, McGregor. They sold golf shit and turf shoes. I, rem I remember the, the name cleats. McGregor, yeah. Yeah. The golf stuff. Yeah, they had those AstroTurf shoes. They had the tongue that flipped over, and on the uh, tongue, it said Mc... 
I'll okay. pull it up. I know. Okay. You, you tell uh, me a story, Steve. I'm going to look something I don't up. have a story to tell you. Well, that's too, it's too bad because you have to talk. Well, I, you know, I've got nothing to say other than... Uh, I was you watched to, the uh, U.S. Open last week. I, I watched the U.S. Open. It was actually um, it was good. It was I was pulling for the Georgia guy, um, who was the guy who didn't win. Yeah, but Boo um, Radley. No, what's his name? No, wasn't Boo Radley. It wasn't Bo. What's his name? It wasn't that Bo. guy. It wasn't that guy at all. It was a new guy, and he's he's also a Georgia player, and he he did really well. He was leading through like whatever most of the rounds, I think, and had a great third round, but he ended up right. losing in the end. But um, it was it was good. It was fun to watch. I enjoy. Oh. I think I enjoy the U.S. Open more than any other tournament because it was it, fun. There, there's that average guy thing that comes into play, but it never happens. But it could. Yeah. You know. It could. It could. It could happen. I will say this. Uh, last when the last Saturday. Oh, do we have live sound? Do we have sound? Yeah, we got sound. Last Saturday, the Reds um, unveiled a statue for Charlie Hustle. Oh, that's right. Mr. Pete Edward Rose. That's right. A Cincinnati native. And he gambled on how tall the statue was He gambled be. on stuff. I don't know what you're but talking look, about. Before, before, look, that's, that's the McGregor I turf shoes. Oh, I think I had a pair. Of course of you did. Everybody did. My industrial they arts were my teacher. dad's. They were hand-me-downs from my dad. This wire, this cord has a... Okay. 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 <laughs> yeah, that's those shoes. Ah, nice. So band logo is that tongue hey, with the just McGregor on it. So anyway. Okay. Come on. Get on it. You're talking about Charlie Hustle. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So they they unveiled a statue of him like his dive into like a base basically. Yeah, the head first slot. That was his thing. I thought about this on the way over. A lot of my heroes are despised by a great number of people. I was a big Billy the Kid fan, so what am I going to say? What can you say? William H. Bonney. Yes. Or William my, McCarthy. My wife, my wife hates Pete Rose. Really? Yeah. Why? Because he, he cheated. He bet on baseball. And, he and she, don't, she don't think he's been honest about it. He didn't throw games, though. You know, I was going to play this. I'll just show it because it's funny, but it's terrible. Uh, so I picked this up. I think I showed it a few weeks ago or maybe a while ago, but anyway. Careful. I, I don't, don't have a cord on this. Stuff. Hang on. Whoa, whoa, don't, go, don't do it. I'll do it? No. Okay. You yank that cable. I, got the, I picked up this picture disc. It's called Charlie Hustle, Pete Rose, Charlie Hustle. It's like, a, it's like a disco song. Yeah, I remember that, something really about bad, that being disco. But uh, it's limited edition, I know that. <laughs> oh, it's limited. Oh, it's limited, all right. So next time I go to Great American Ballpark, I'll be I'll be happy to see the new statue. I bet he'll sign it for about a mm, two hundred fifty. He probably do it for twenty bucks. Twenty bucks? You think he'll do it for twenty? I went to I was in uh, Raleigh one time for uh, went to the state fair. You know they had the state fair there in Raleigh. They have like flea market. Yep. And Charlie Hustle, Pete Rose was signing yeah. autographs like just next door in the sports complex or whatever. But I didn't right. go because. You had to pay like twenty bucks to get him uh, to sign your hat. We just had William Zabka here in town, uh, who's the you know the uh, the bad guy from Karate Kid and some other movies like that, like just one of the guys. The sweep him guy. Sweep, yeah, sweep the leg. No, 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 no. the the other uh, blonde haired guy, the old, the younger guy. guy. Yeah, the young. Um, and uh, but it was like twenty five bucks to hang out with him and uh, get his autograph, and I'm like, get out uh, of here. And I heard he's like super nice, which made me like. Regret the situation even more. Whatever. As we see Hulk Hogan and I took a sh- I took Look. a shit. I took a shit next to Beaver. Okay. I shot a PSA with James Brown. Go fuck yourself. Yeah. Beaver said he's. I shot. I shot a commercial with Bill Cobalt. <laughs> Beaver said he was my friend. Just like Larry Mandela was his friend. Larry Mandela, Gilbert, Whitey, and Mike. Nice. That's that's. That's Beaver's friend. I do like the fact that Me TV show and uh, Leave It to Beaver at, at like 4 in the afternoon today. 4.30. Or, or during the summer. 4.30. Whatever. All right, let's talk about what we played. Okay. I uh, started out with something crazy. I wanted to hear it. A, a gentleman that is obsessed with the southwest of the United States, which I don't blame him, Marty Robbins. Uh, yeah. 
El Paso. And look at the, the first song on the side, El Paso. Last song on the side, El Paso City. Okay. What the hell? Um, but the crazy thing about this record. Oh, I got to get up there because I got to show this. Um, on both sides of this record, this record's signed by Marty Robbins. We got a sign. I got this at like Goodwill way back, way back in the day. We got a little signature there, and a little one on the back with some Scotch tea over it. Pretty cool. It's not a bad record, uh, but I forget like how much this right? this cat is obsessed with the Southwest. That, well, he was a that, story, he was a storyteller. He's a guy. storyteller. That's, that's, um, he should have went to that seminar, that storytelling seminar. Down in the west, the town, town, town of El Paso, I, I fell in love with a Mexican girl. Um, they built a wall up, and I never saw her. Bam, bam. Oh, um, sorry about that. Went a little, tried to go a little. <laughs> A little country funk. I go a little country. I go a little funk. Uh, Johnny Guitar Watson. Uh, Where's this guy from? Johnny Guitar Watson? Yeah. You know, I'm not sure. I want to say Georgia, but I'm making all I of that up. I think you're right. Um, I think you might be right. This is 77. Uh, it's got some slow jams on it. One of the best covers of any record ever. Um, well, I do love the cover on this a album. A Real Mother for You. He's in like a, bo a soapbox Soapbox car. racer kind of thing. But it looks like a caddy. Inappropriate. Your left's your right, and your right's your left. Whatever. <laughs> uh, hey, this was a um, pulling wires. I'm trying. Those wires are going everywhere. I need more. Oh, wire. if you do that, I it's need gonna, more cable. It's gonna, it's gonna disconnect. I need Don't more. Do that. Look at that. What? Can't do that. See that? Yep. Okay. Everything goes away. I hear you. It'll all go away. Uh, dig of the week from a couple weeks ago. Why am I center screen? Santa. I can't ever get the pop off. It's going to go black and white again. I don't care. All the black and white. I don't care. A tick, 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 tack. Yeah. Man, I'm on vacation. I don't give a yeah. shit. Yeah. See, I, that's why I like, I like the curtain. I don't want to see the end of the curtain. That way, for all everybody else virtual, knows. Virtual. It's like a virtual set. Yeah, like everybody else, forever everybody else knows, this curtain goes on for a quarter mile that way. There's a quarter mile of curtain. It does now. That way, you don't you don't know the difference. You people are stupid. You don't know. We're the smart ones. We're the ones that spend our time doing this on Friday night. Yeah, that's real smart. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> just ask my liver. <laughs> hey, it's Mr. Uh, Mr. T's making an appearance on WrestleMania yeah, One. Yeah, he was tag team partners. I don't with, remember uh, that Hulk at all. Hogan, just now. Wow. He pities the fool that's uh, not. Well, like Hulk Hogan. Uh, this was Digging Week from a couple weeks ago. 16 original jazz claxes. Brother. Reefer songs. This was awesome. We played side one. Uh, had songs uh, Reefer Man, The Man from Harlem. Here Comes the Man with the Jive. Made in the weed. No uh, way. If You're a Viper. Randy Orton. A Vapor? Viper. Vapor. This was early vaping. Viper. Viper. What's a Viper? Um, Texas Tea Party, Light Up, Jack on Mellow, and Sweet Marijuana Brown. I need, a, I need a hot pickle. Oh, we need a hot pickle, yeah. Hey, that that was a great, it was pretty cool. It's early jazz, so it's not. It's a um, compil this is like the mid-80s compilation? Late 70s. Okay, then. It's a late 70s uh, compilation of stuff from like the 40s and 30s. I mean, it's early jazz. Stash Recordings. Yeah. And okay. they did a bunch of uh, very provocative um, compilations. 1976 and stuff. Stash yeah. Records. Yeah, Stash did some weird shit. Okay. We, we talked about them a couple weeks ago, but it's weird history. If you got a few minutes, look up Stash Records on. Um, yeah, you got you got minutes Wikipedia. to spare. Do that while you're taking yeah. a dump. Uh, clutch Earth Rocker. Terrific Clutch. Uh, I got this during that Best Buy sale. You guys remember that a couple years ago, where Best Buy had all the the, the records like. Yeah, why don't why don't they do that again? Slashed. That was that was nice. Yeah, this is Earth Rocker, which was uh, 2012, I think it was. I'm making is that it up. Clonade? Yeah, it's Clonade. <laughs> my mom's a huge Clonade fan. I got a Clonade stuck in my colon right now. Okay, I think they call those polyps. You got an ovarian cyst. 
Did you get the uh, HPV virus when you were 12 years old? No. Mom? <laughs> Dad? I do have some uh, seeds in my pocket, so. I do shine my pants. <laughs> I do shine my we were going to do a shot for something. Yeah. And I got that special Violet Smash or whatever the hell Oh, that that's is. right. Let's do a shot for not only Clutch, but while you're standing up, for Commander Cody. Because I love Commander Cody. Great. This is, a, this is a great cover. Yell it. Yeah, it's a great cover. Speaking of great covers. Oh, look at that. That's cool. Great gatefold. So nice. All right, at your at your leisure, no big deal. Um, I have recently become a Commander Cody fan. Um, you see the records, not not for a lot of money. A lot of times, uh, this is uh, the and, and the Lost Planet Airman. Oh yeah, I see a few of those around. Country rock, it's country rock done by this somebody from have, California. Though, right? It's good. It's good. It's not the one I'm after. Um, what I'm really after, and I think it's only released on like a. Did they do Hot, Hot Rod Lincoln? Yeah. This isn't on there, right? No. What I really want is a, a, a weird video from them um, called Two Triple Cheese. And it was it was on, ne never on like a main album. It was always on like it's, it's on like a live 45 or a live seven inch. Two triple cheese side order of fries. Two triple cheese side order of fries. You've never seen that? Go look it up. Commander Cody, two triple cheese. I've posted it to the uh, Facebook page before, and maybe I'll do that again sometime this week. So go put your McGregor's on, and go join our Facebook page, so, and get ready for it. I found this. I found this today. You know, got off work, and I'm like, I'm starting my 11 day, whatever. So I'm gonna 11 buy. 11 day. I'm gonna buy some liquor. Mm. And. I bought a little bit of tequila. I bought a little bit of. I bought a little bit of tequila, a little bit of gin. I was thinking you had. I was thinking you had some uh, vodka, and I, I was going to bring but... some rum, which I have some vanilla rum, which kind of screwed yeah. it up. But I was going to make some lits. Okay. But instead, I also just in case I bought this, and I'm kind of. We're going to look into it. This is like a a blueberry whiskey it's like uh my guess it's like a like a corn whiskey like a corn whiskey or a moonshine like a moonshine yeah it's corn rye malted barley bourbon mash blue ridge mountain well water i bet it's uh blended with north carolina blueberries there we go it's only 29 percent alcohol i so. bet it's sweet i bet it's 58 real sweet. proof this is batch number two okay oh wow so this is broad branch smashing violet Blueberry. Too many terms. That's so many terms in that terms. whole. So why don't we just give it a swirl? Okay. Blueberry, you said. Not blackberry, but blueberry. Oh. I prefer bl blueberry to blackberries. I like that. Um, it reminds me of some stuff out of Wilkesboro, where they sell the black cherry and the. That's... Yeah, but what? Way less. Less alcohol content. Yeah, those are like 98 yeah. proof. That's whatever. not too sweet. It's not too sweet though. It's no. got it's got a nice kick to it. That's why I love the apple pie stuff. But sometimes that stuff tastes North like North Carolina pancake craft syrup. infusion. Very cool. I, I'm I can get down with that. Yeah. So this is probably not at your local ABC store or, or liquor store. I could see where that would get you in trouble though. But uh, it's it's darn tasty. Yeah, that's pretty good. Even has a sell by date, 12 September 19, uh, 2017. Oh. For discerning drinkers who give a damn like you. Language. Wait a minute. This says, Language. our fearlessly crafted spirits are mashed, distilled, and bottled on site in Forsyth County, North Carolina. Oh. This is from Winston-Salem. That's where we work. This might be that place on Trade Street on the end of oh, the yeah. near, near Ziggy's. Wow. I'm about to do some more investigating on this. Forsyth. Can you hear that rain out there? Yeah, that's uh, that's Cindy. Have we ever been on the air when it's been raining? Mm -mm. I don't think we have in like four years. We've been doing this like four and a half years or something. Nair a storm. I don't has, think Nair. Nair a storm has occurred. During the show. We've had stuff before and after for sure. Blueberries are, are in season right now, by the way. Yeah. Hey, check it out. Uh, part of my limited Sun Ra collection, Angels and Demons at Play. This is 180 uh, gram 
uh, reissue, uh, pure virgin vinyl. I can't remember what label did this. Wax time, uh, 2014 reissue of a classic Sun Ra record that is just so damn good and oh, yeah. weird. This is, this is right when you came in. This is what was playing when I came in. I That's was like, it. when the hell did you get this? Yeah, I've had, I've got two this Sun This is Ra's, nice. You know? I've got two Sun Ra records. They're, are they all reissues? Yeah. Yeah. Mm, the other one, mm. yeah, I think so too. This is really good. Yeah, and weird, and you know that's what that's what the shit we like. I'm not gonna get up. That's all right. Um, our buddy Shane uh, hollered for, at us for some Queens of the Stone Age, the or, Shane Company, or um, Eagles of Death Metal request, and I pulled out Queens um, Rated X. I can't find myself titled. It's not anywhere to be found. It's driving the first album, driving me crazy. The one with the crotch. Yep. I keep feeling like somebody's borrowed it. No. But everybody's like, nope. Nope. So I don't know. I don't know where it is. You put it somewhere stupid. I put it, or I did. Believe me, I was looking through your funk. You put it somewhere stupid. No, the funk is not organized. The rock is meticulously organized. So I don't know. I played this, and one of the better gatefolds we got. Okay. Oh, my. What's going on there? There's a lot of. Uh, Vaginas. Uh, yeah, there's a lot going Vaginas on. Vaginas and Penna and. Looks like a Dead Kennedys album. There's a Dead uh, Dead Vagina album. It's a Dead Vagina album. That's the best kind of vagina is a Dead Vagina. Yeah, we get, probably get mad about we got women's lib people watching this? Probably. I smart, I smart off at the mouth, though. I've been known to smart off at the mouth. Uh, you, you came in and brought some things out of your bag, bag balls. What are you bag balling? Yeah. Um, I played a, one of these gong albums off this box set that I got, the Radio Gnome Invisible Trilogy, and we played the third album, which is uh, You. Mm -hmm. Great album, fantastic. I mean, how many's in this set? Three. Three in this it's set. A trilogy. It's a trilogy. There's three oh, okay, in a trilogy. trilogy. This is the it's BYG Records and some people are like oh I shouldn't have bought that because they band didn't get a penny and let me go to YouTube and download some shit. So yeah, you know, like I said, you buy it used in a but store. I gotta tell you before before you ain't I bought, buying new Gong albums. Before I bought this, I had no idea what this freaking early band of Gong sounded like. Yeah, because I don't I don't have it. You can't get it. If you can get it, you're gonna pay a lot of money for it, probably. Yeah, but everything that as and then as, you said, say play something as record collectors. Everything we buy is used and completely no, different. Artists so. are not getting anything from so that. So then I put on the meters, and we've always, you know, it's so easy to throw on side one because you got sissy strut, sophisticated sissy, <laughs> the Quentin Tarantino songs. What? Yeah, yeah. So we played side two, whatever. It's got some great music on it. In fact, the last song is really good, called Simple Song. Um, if they haven't sampled that, I don't know what, what they're doing because yeah. there's a lot of good beats on there. Beefs. And this is the Meters Josie Records uh, original from whenever it was. I don't know. Yesterday. <laughs> now, I wanted to hear Mr. Bungle. Um, buddy of mine tagged me in a Mr. Bungle video this morning uh, from the Bazaar Festival in 2000. It reminded me, I was like, damn it, I want to play some OG Bungle shit. And uh, these reissues from a few years ago, uh, 2009 on Runt. They sound like shit, to be honest with you. This is a present from the girlfriend. You got to boost the master and the volume yeah, and, the you, you gain, and the gain all the way up to even be able to hear these things that are recorded so damn low. Great a great record, but, but what you're a right. freaking great record. I mean, it's yeah. just so good. First Mr. Bungle, like what, 90, 91, some shit like that. Mm. Oh. So great. Um, have to bust that out from Produced time to by time. John Zorn. Yeah. And he plays horns on it. All of those crazy like I heard saxophone. a little uh, I heard a little uh, who did I hear? From uh you Blue from the Madness? Dennis Hopper? Oh the Dennis Hopper Well yeah, that one song sounded like the the intro sounded like mad, like a ska a British ska song. And then of course Mike Patton comes in with some crazy lyrics and stuff, but yeah. that that was so uh yeah, there's a Dennis Hopper sample in there it from sounded like uh, madness, Blue Velvet. Madness to me. <laughs> yeah, so that's what we played. Yeah, that's it. Clean slate. That's it. We're done. Good night. 
What? Oh no, we're gonna do a D O T H. No D O T W. Let's do a H. Dig of the hell. <laughs> we got a dig of the hell. Um, with some shit. Dig of the hell with some shit. How many you got? What you got? I got ten. Oh my! You got ten? Oh I my got, God! I got ten. I, in fact, I got eight of them today. Oh wow! I did a little, a little like, get off work and do a little digging before I go home. Okay. And I hit two places and got like eight records. And I could have got, I could have brought more. I was like, and I put some back. You know, everything I've got, and well, your stuff was three dollars and less, right? Well, the first place was a, a buck each, and the second place was a two or three, depending on which one. It was. All of my shit is the leftovers from that huge jazz score I had a couple weeks ago. You're talking bargain bucket? Yeah, I think it's all bargain bucket because uh, sure, the everything I, I have is uh, seventy-five cents. Wow. Um, and tremendous jazz score from a couple weeks ago. And I only did part of it a couple weeks ago. Okay. I let Carl have last I don't remember week. what I did. I let Carl have did last Did I do week. all my records? No. What where, What did I do? You did half. You had 20. I probably need to go back and see what I did because yeah. there's some I haven't done that I've holding. For sure. For sure. Whatever. But before we get started, I'll let you start. But before we really start, uh, we'll, we'll throw out a little VCLT because um, before Jay left... Um, Jay had to take off, but um, one of the first things I ever got sent VCLT was from our good buddy Sean, who's made a lot of our graphics. He sent um, uh, what's his name? Now I'm forgetting the damn name. Uh, Donald Fagan. Donald Fagan's Nightfly, and he said I buy this record every time I see it, and uh, I'll make sure that everybody I know has this record if they want it. And that always kind of stuck with me because it is a good record. It really is a great record. And um, even though I own it because he sent it to me, I bought this copy uh, for 75 cents when I got all these jazz records. One of the only records in there that wasn't jazz. And um, I gave it to Jay because Steve's got it already. And uh, uh, Jay, uh, Jay, yeah, you looked it up on your spreadsheet. You got it. And uh, Jay didn't have it, so I passed that on to Jay. So I'm passing that along. Very cool. And this week I ran into a place that had nothing but just religious records, Christmas records, religious records, Christmas records, and one other record was in there. Um, but it's a record that has been given to me uh, down the road, I think from our good buddy Metal Theologian. Uh, so I've already got it. So this is VCLT for Steve who's not even in here. He's coming. He can pick up his record on the way. Well, Blood Rock 2. It's not the, what? Not the best shaped record ever. Uh, but it was a cheap record. I don't think I have any of these guys. It's good stuff, man. I've got it, and I wasn't going to let it sit in there, because who knows? It may have found its way into a goddamn dumpster, and I'm just not letting that shit happen on my watch. Where'd you find this? Goodwill. Blood Rock 2. You know, I come across records that I have, and I'm like, oh, God, here's a really cool copy of this. and I, yeah. I should go ahead and just buy it and uh, either give it to you or Jay. Sometimes I, d I do that. Sometimes it's like something if you find all the time, I'm like, oh, they'll buy it for seven. Thanks, man. Then. But, um, yeah, you, you do some records. Let me plug in just in case this mic actually works. Probably not. It's okay. Well, I was out today and I went to Goodwill near the station. Yeah. There's a lot of records there. Really? I saw a Beach Boy. I saw a Beach Boys album, uh, a couple Beach like a Beach Boys Live that I've never seen before, and another Beach Boys album that you have. I don't know if it's a compilation or not, but it's a right. great it's a great record. Jay said it was like one of the most rare like a tracks, eight tracks um, called Beach All Around or something like that. Anyway, there was a little they were a little dirty, so I, you know I didn't listen to them, but they looked a little scratched up, so I passed on them. But um, I did pick up some cool stuff. Yeah. This, one, this first one is a sealed. It's on RCA, so I'm afraid to play it during the show, but I think it would be a good show record to play. Right. It's sealed. It's called Los Indios Tabajadas. 
Whoa. play favorite movie themes. And it looks like a couple of guys from Bolivia, maybe, or somewhere in that area. That's pretty cool. Playing uh, movie themes. Whoa. Bolivia, you say? Maybe. I don't know. Guatemala. Los Indios Tabajadas. I'll have to look up where the, the, the Tabajadas Indians are from. But, uh, hell, it's never been open. That's cool. And I thought it'd be kind of fun to play, but I'm afraid we might get popped because it is an RCA. Yeah, there are. There, it is movie themes, so you never and know. Movie themes, it, some yeah, of the weirdest maybe, shit will get I you don't popped, know. man. We'll play it later. I don't know. Um, I also have here a compilation from Electra Music. Uh huh. It's called the Musician's Guide Volume One, and uh, it's a, a guided musical tour through the first album release on Electra Musician Records. Limited edition. It's got, uh, let's see. Let's see. Eric Gale, the Griffith Park Collection. Wow. Uh, Freddie Hubbard, Material, John McLaughlin, Charlie Parker, Whoa. Lee Rittenauer, Red Rodney, and Iris Sullivan. So kind of a cool compilation. I've never heard it. It was in really good shape. So I yeah, decided sure. to bring it home. Good names on there. And it's a promo copy. It's got a little stamp on the back. Uh, one more that I got in the classical realm, or the symphonic realm, I should say. This is a uh, Columbia issue of Leonard Bernstein, the New York Philharmonic, doing uh, the Ride of the Valkyries and a bunch of uh, Wagner pieces. Right. If, I mean, if you want to, you want to get fired up. Put on some Wagner. Oh, for sure. So, uh, you kidding me? I have Pocket some Wagner. Now, baby. I, don't, I don't think I have a compilation quite like this. It's kind of, you know, little bits and pieces from the some of the more popular pieces. Yeah. <laughs> I love the smell of napalm in the morning. Exactly. One more I'll show you that I got okay. at Goodwill is a Steve Miller album. Uh, this one actually probably is a little noisy, but I just want to, I took it home because I just, it was only a buck and I want to listen to it. I've got a couple of the songs on that Steve Miller compilation. I think you anthology? have anthology. It's on yeah. here. That's a good like, count. Um, I Love You and Going to the Country is on here. Those are both on that album. This is called Number Five. And I, I've not seen that. I can't around. tell you this is fifth album. I don't know. I haven't done the research on it, but it's on Capitol Records. Um, it's a Steve Miller uh, early record. Cool. Even though he seems to kind of be a, a dick nowadays. Whatever. But you know, whatever. He's old enough. He can be a dick if he wants to. You hit a certain age, you can be a di you can be a dick. <laughs> totally. Oh my God. How many records you got? Uh, four or five. Okay, I'll do. Uh, I'll do one more. Do one more. You want a shot of this? One more. You probably don't. Need no, one. I'm. I'm. I'm good. Uh, one more from that dig. I got my hair cut. At Goodwill. I like your hair. Where'd yeah. you go? Supercuts. I did. I go to Supercuts. The hot pregnant chick. Sh Cheyenne. No. Hot pregnant chick. She was like, "How you want it?" I'm like, "Any way you like it." Any way you want. That's what I told her. It's the way you need. I said any way you like it. So this is a. <laughs> it's called New Age. Finger new, fucked. <laughs> sorry. A, a I'm new, sorry, everybody. I'm a sorry. New Age compilation, Standing Stones. And there's a cool picture on the front of a Standing Stone. Looks like. Uh, it's a promo copy, loaned for promotion only. Got a nice stamp on it. We have uh, Waterfalls by Rick Wakeman. John Themis and TLC, DeShiel Ray, Stephen Caudell. I guess, be honest with you, I think uh, something by Percy Bysshe Shelley, like he's on here. But um, I guess Rick Wakeman's what caught my eye. Yeah, and I decided yeah. to give it a, give it a whirl. So uh, some new age, what they call new age music. Hey, make sure that uh, lamp's turned up all the way, Steve. Okay. Yep. Yeah, okay. That makes a big difference. Big We've been difference. sitting in the dark for fucking 40 minutes, nine minutes. We need to pick it up. we got to pick it up. We'll All right, we're picking it up. Take it over, 
Mr. Hey, Pickup. Yeah, uh, you guys ever heard of Roy Eldritch? Jazz guy. This is all from that jazz score. Uh, I've got a, something with, with him on the Verve with a, a singer like Louis Armstrong or no, it's not Louis Armstrong, somebody like that, but it's on the Verve. Um, they called him Little Jazz, known as having a sophisticated uh, harmony, including the use of tritone substitutions. Okay, then. If you want to get into music stuff. His virtuoso solos exhibiting departure from the smooth lyrical style of earlier jazz trumpeter innovator Louis Armstrong. And this was kind of like the precursor to bebop and for jazz. And check that shit out. <laughs> and uh, this is like, uh, it's what was the name? It's called, called Swing Something. That's the name Sounds of the... Sounds of Swing. Sounds of Swing. That's the name of the record label. And it's on this translucent red vinyl. There is one for sale on Discogs for like 30 some dollars. It just doesn't... It, it's not around. It's not been around. It's not been for sale. It's not. A, it's just not something you see. What you been doing? Uh, so interested to check that out. I'm sure it's a little earlier jazz, and it may not be exactly my steez, but with, with that with that red vinyl, and it was uh, in pristine condition. Seventy five cents. Holy shit! Uh, you got Stan, Stanley Turrentine. You know this guy? Yeah. So this is like a. Um, He's part of that. Uh, what's that George Benson group? The uh, Bob James, mm? Stanley Turrentine, that, that, CTI, CTI. What are you talking about? Yep, this is actually uh, from. Uh, it's called New Time Shuffle, um, which came out in like '79, but it's actually a '67 recording, um, and this is um, on a series called The Jazz File, which came out. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Which came out on a riddle, little record label you may have heard of. Blue Note. Blue Note. And look at this record. Blue Note. <laughs> All of these jazz records I got. What? They're, they look like so they reissued them or something? It's a series I guess they did um, called The Jazz File. I'm not real familiar, but look at the players. And while you're up. List those players, or tell me, and I'll tell them. Joe Farrell. Joe Farrell, or the big ones you should not recognize. Uh, McCoy Tyner. McCoy Tyner's on here. Stanley Turrentine. Stanley Turrentine. Uh, Donald Bird. Donald Bird's on there. Ron Carter. Ron Carter's on there. Yeah. Your dad. My dad's on there. No, my dad's not on there. He's busy throwing slow curves, motherfucker. Um, but a little blue note from the late seventies, and and. Condition that look. I mean, I would. I don't throw out near mint very often. That, that looks like near mint. It's so for a lot of these records look like that to where I pull it out and I'm like, did anybody ever play this record for Christ's sakes? Um, uh, you guys know Johnny Hammond, the organ player. I pulled out a little. He invented uh, the organ. Yeah, he the invented Hammond it. Organ. Absolutely. 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 Um, the Prophet, I'll do that one first. This one came out in 72 on the Kudu label. I guess it's called Kudu. 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 Okay. Um, got some great players on here. Ron Carter's also in here. Drums. Oh, I don't know. How about a little Billy Cobham? Ooh. Guitar, Eric Gale. Okay. We've <laughs> talked about him. Yeah. Uh, this whole Pepper Adams is on here. Hubert Laws is on here. Hubert Laws. Uh, not heard this. Don't know shit about the record. It's another one you pull that out. This man looks... is Johnny Hammond's a pianist, right? Yeah. <laughs> Organist or pianist. Organ. Or pianist. <laughs> He's pretty good at that pianist, isn't he? He's good at handling his penny. Yes. Okay. I got another Johnny Hammond in that same lot there. Also on the Kudu label. Higher ground. Hold on. Okay. I'm gonna show this one. That one was '72 that you're showing. The other one over here is '73. And I couldn't find a lot of uh, shit on this record, but I, I did find um, this little this little shit on here. The Big Sur Suite has been sampled multiple times, including the Beastie Boys' "Pass the Mic," <laughs> Dr. Dre, a N-word with the gun. 
I won't say the word there. Big sewer suites on side two. Yeah, uh, in the 70s, he formed this his own is, ensemble. This uh, yeah. arranged and connected by Bob James, by the yeah, way. Yeah, Bob James is the producer on that, right? It's yeah. all connected. Yeah. It's all connected. We're all part of the same engine. And it's all conducted by job Bob James. That's that's Your life is all just one big conduction of Bob James. Bob James is on top of it, sitting in his taxi. Yeah. And then it loops. And you can see the jump cut where it loops. And Tony Danza tells you about the jump this cut. This album is available on stereo and quad LP. Album? Who? Uh, and I got one more. How many more you got? It's like a CTI thing, you know. You got a problem with that? Nope. I got two. Some people have a... No, I got I got lots more than I got two. I got six. Six? Yeah, let me do let me do three more. Okay. Uh, so, uh, today I went out and I was digging around. Went yep. to the the place we, we informed the new photographer about. Yeah. Maybe we shouldn't have. We should have killed her instead. Well, we'll kill her later. So, I got a Dexter Gordon album. Oh, I like Dexter Gordon. Yeah. Sophisticated Giant. This is from 1976. I'm wow. gonna making that 77 on CBS. I've got a mid 80s. Okay then. Uh, Dexter Gordon. It's actually pretty good. This is really, uh, from what I could tell, this is pretty good. It went on one night and all the lights went out in New York. He ended up going up and playing in some club because mm. the elevator worked. Imagine and a blackout uh, jazz show. Oh, it'd be great. It's not racist. I'm just saying. No, not at all. This is uh, recorded on June. 21st, 22nd, 1977. Dude, that's like this past week. New York City at Sound Ideas. 21st, 22nd. What's today's date? Uh, June 23rd. A couple days ago. It was yesterday. 20 years ago yesterday. Also, I didn't mention this. Are you going to show that record? What? No, no, no. Oh, this one? Tell me the next one you show. I got something I want you to show. You don't have to show it. You don't have to show it if you don't want to. I don't, well, I, whatever. No, no, no. If you got one you want to show, just remind me when you're going to show something. I need to tell you to do something. I'm going to show... I'll show one now. How about okay. That? What you got? I'll show two. Butt balls. So, I'm a huge Herbie Mann fan. Herbie Mann. I've seen a lot of Herbie Mann. I've seen some that I have and I've some that you have. And I won't buy it because I think, well, he's got this or I have this. But, um... Here's a couple I had never seen before. Slauncha. What are you drinking? The first one uh. is called the Herbie Man Live at Newport. It's on Atlantic, of course. Most of his are. This is uh, from 1974. 1963. Oh, Jesus Christ. That's yeah, early. Live at Newport, 1963. I don't have that one. No, you don't. That's why I'm telling you. I haven't seen any of these. No. Oh. So, a younger Herbie man, live at Newport. So, it's a live recording. So, I, don't, I haven't heard it yet. But here's one I heard a little bit online. I liked it. This is a little earlier than that. This is from 1957, I believe. This is Herbie man called High Fluten. Wow, okay. Check out Herbie. He's like really clean looking there. Yeah. That's just a... He could be Dennis the Menace's dad right there. Of course, there. that's just a... A drawn uh, illustration, like a courtroom uh, illustrator's rendition of him. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I was really glad to get a couple more Herbie Mans and a couple that I've never seen before. To be honest with you. Oh, while you're up, grab that very first one. That uh, that red record. You talking about King Crimson? No. That red record, the very first one. What? That I showed. This the one. The translucent red record. John. No, nope. the very first one oh, I showed. Jesus Christ. Black and white cover, before but it's the, like a red record. For the blue note, the Roy Eldridge? Roy Eldridge, that's Thank his you. name. Thank you. What else strikes you about that uh, album? I'll give you a hint. Look, um, at, look at the picture on the front of the album. Closely. Well, he's not holding a cigarette. Is he not? Oh, wait a minute. I see smoke rising from... Uh huh. He has a cigarette between his index and his middle finger. Black and white picture, African-American gentleman, cigarette between the trumpet there. Fits the grown man record night mold. It's a win. Right there. It's a win. It's a win. I meant to mention that earlier. It's a win. <laughs> We've already won before we played it. It's a win. 
Um, weird thing about me, I don't know if I mentioned it, but weird <sighs> thing about me giving that, uh, giving Jay that uh, record. Donald Fagan. That Donald Fagan. It's a German press. Ooh. That may be a problem. We realized after the fact it's a German press of the Nightfly. So, uh, so are you going to give it to him? Or are you going to be like I, a, Yeah, I'll let him take it I home won't say. Him. I won't say it. If it's worth a 20... When I was a child, Indian giver was a term, but it's not a good term. <laughs> not a good term. That. You can't do that anymore. You can't do that anymore. No, it's against the law to go... <gasps> I'm Native American, so I can do that. I got two left. I got one. I'll do one. You do one. So, um, last time I was here, I got an early Father's Day gift. It was the Roger Waters album because yeah. I'm, I'm going to see Roger in July, and I was real excited about it. And even after listening to the album, I'm more excited because it's a great album. And I do see from setlist.com or some setlist place that he's playing, you know, three or four songs off that record as well as a lot of Pink Floyd that is going to be freaking fantastic anyway yeah, sure gonna be a great show but one thing i wanted for father's day and then i got whoa um is this uh sergeant pepper's reissue that came out oh yeah recently uh, it's a double album it's been re um engineered by um uh, george martin's son i believe and Derek brady Derek brady new mexico exactly new mexican Derek brady and uh, there's a great comp there's a great second uh, companion LP that's got some other takes of I mean basically they, they put the album together again with the same songs but just different versions is that of the, them. they have the first take of Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds first take I don't know that's the video that I w was talking about maybe a couple so, weeks ago maybe so which I was kind of crazy you could hear them talking about it, it, it. sounds it sounds it sounds fantastic I, I really love the sound of this album. They've, they've kind of pumped the bass a little bit and yeah. uh, just oh, I like brought that. it out. And, uh, crazy price for a 2LP with a bonus it is. It is crazy. It's a little crazy price. But it is it really? It doesn't come with a download. The Beatles are good about like protecting that. But you got an extra LP. Well, yeah, L LP of, of bonus, which I think I at least I have one of these already on, on the um, anthology um, double album I have. From Sarge, the Sgt. Pepper days, I have the same exact one. I, I believe. So I don't know that I would put it in the crazy category for price. Mm. I was glad to get it as a gift because it's, yeah. it's kind of pricey. Yeah, sure, okay. I was telling Jay earlier. There, you know, we're big Queens of the Stone Age fans and whatnot. I do love uh, seeing the Parlophone label, though. It's it's yeah, beautiful. I like Parlophone. It's beautiful. Um, there's a music on vinyl. Uh, Queens of the Stone Age has been up at like Songs for the Deaf or Lowell Bust of Parallels. It's been up at um, Hippo? What, Hippo for years. And it's like, but it's like forty bucks. I'm sure it sounds great, but eh. What is it? One of the Queens I don't have. It's the black. It's, it's like an Parallels. original version. Original. No, it's a reissue, but music on vinyl version, which is much better quality. It sounds, okay. I'm sure it sounds terrific. My Faith No More reissues are music on vinyl. They sound great. Really impressed with them. Uh, this is somebody I wasn't familiar with at all. Chris Hines. Michael Familiar. Yes. Chris Hines' combination Mission Suite, which looks like Howard Stern. Isn't that Stern. that country singer who looks reinvented like himself? Chris, Chris Hines? Gaines? Oh. Looks like Howard Stern playing the flute. It, no, it looks like, not Howard Stern. What's that actor that... He was a comedian, but he wasn't funny, and he ended up doing like Law and Order for like emo, fifty years. Uh, emo Williams? No. He he looks like Emo Williams. No, the, look, what's look the comedian? Uh, Richard. Richard Belzer. Belzer. Yeah. Sorry, he's not funny, and now he's dead. So. But I'm look sorry, here at the but... bottom. What's that say down there? Um, in vitrib der metrono. It's German. It's a German press. Hamburg. Made in West Germany. Interesting, because it's the same place I got that German so press. So who is this cat? You, I, I got that know? same same place as the German press of that uh, record for Jay. What do you know about this? Chris Hines is a um, known as being a kind of a really avant-garde. Uh, he started out as a pianist. He looks like a German. It's became like a flautist. Chris Hintz. And developed this combination that really kind of folds in this Baroque style of jazz play. Okay. Uh, uh, which is really, which board, a lot of people say borders on free jazz. Okay. 
I'm, I'm listening. Um, and uh, later on became a uh, pretty prominent New Age musician. Went to Tibet, got very involved in the uh, spiritual aspect of Tibetan music and whatnot. Oh. Became very into New Age music, inspired by that. Um, but in this area, this is like 73, I think, like fusion, rock, jazz, free jazz, avant-garde. I bet he, I bet he listened to Herbie, man. Bonkers. I'm, I'm anticipating this being just bonkers, and I've never seen or heard of this guy ever Richard before. Belzer. Yeah. I uh, got some crossovers and some combinations with some people that you guys know and blah, 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 blah. But anyway. And blah, blah, blah. Uh, kills a flute. It's, it's pretty much the takeaway from that is the mug kills a damn flute. So I, like got, one, that, I got one more. You got one more? A one. Unamas. Okay, what you got? Unamas. So I went by our local bookstore that sells records sometimes. They've re book bag store. They remodeled and every time I go in there I get more and more and more and more and more disappointed. But every yeah. once in a while you can come across something and I, I happen to come across something that I thought was rather inter rather interesting. And uh I it was Captain Beefheart's solo oh. His uh, his, uh, his debut album. Oh nineteen sixty seven. Oh I don't have this, I need it. Yeah, on Buddha Records. Yeah, and I I was so it, it's it wasn't the cleanest copy, but I took it down to Jonathan's at Underdog, and he'll clean a record for seventy five cents with his machine of magic. It's like a VPI, but it's a different it's name. Still, it's another. It still it still starts with a little poppy noise, and I said after we cleaned it, I said Jonathan, we listened to it, and I said, what do you think? You know, wh how would you grade this? And he says, well, it's still. When it starts off, it's, you hear some noise and pops. So, so I'm going to give it a VG minus, but it, it really gets better as he goes along. So he's very discerning, and, and I his appreciate VG, his VG minus. I, I I appreciate. He his put VG minus on my pet sounds. Okay, then that's all you need to know. My pet sound sounds great, except for one skip at the very end of the record. And you, you've all gotten boners off of that. So damn, you know what damn I'm straight. That's so, cool. So yeah, so I was really happy to be. Oh, I, I, this is the first. Captain Beefheart album I've ever found. I've got uh, one other one. I've got one up. You got Captain. Trout Mat Trout no. Mask Replica? The anniversary of that just came up, actually. Yeah. Jay was mentioning the anniversary of vinyl in general. Okay, then. Came up um, th this week or today or something crazy. What's he talking about? First record ever pressed. Like. What was the first record ever pressed? Frank Sinatra? Really? No. Nah. Jay makes a lot of stuff up. He does. Most of it involves Nipsey Russell. And Nipsey Russell is involved in a lot of that stuff. Hey, uh, thanks for uh, hanging out with us here on this Dig It A Week uh, uh, segment here on Girl Man Record Night. We'll take a quick commercial break. We'll we're be back. Coming back. We're being very Deutschland, by the way. Yeah, we're going to be some uh, right Deutschland. Now. We're going to do some so speak and chip chat. Uh, so stay tuned for more of. What do you do when you're surrounded by crocodiles? Run, you slide, you hit the bump and take a dive. It's Super Crocodile Mile with a high-speed air cushion body board and Super Drencher Spray. But watch out for the crocs. You run, you slide, you hit the bump and take a dive. Super Crocodile Mile with air cushion body board and Super Drencher Spray from Marshawn. We got a new wrap at Got It All Grocery. We the one food store with a bank and a bar. Go to customer service, we'll sell you a car. We the one food store with concrete and clothes. And where the stuff comes from, nobody knows. At Food Line, we don't give you a song and dance when you come into our store. Just extra low prices on a wide variety of top quality name brand products. And we serve them up with a healthy dose of courteous service. My partner's breaking, don't be mistaken. Huh. We got a new wrap. You know, a lot of people think I have the best seat in the house. No way. The best seat in the house is right here. Cheering on the Cubs with the greatest fans in the world and the greatest beer in the world, Budweiser. Yeah, nothing quenches a Cubs fan's thirst for victory quite like the king of beer. Oh, now here comes another one. For you. 
Lake Dolores, the magical water world that features the most exciting high-speed water slides. The family fun place that offers relaxation and incredible thrills just off the I-15 Las Vegas freeway near Barstow. Call now for special rates. Glide down the 200-foot water slides up to 50 miles an hour. Good, clean, safe fun. A thrill a second. Bring the kids. Picnic. Camp overnight. Fly the giant swings at Lake Dolores. The magical water world that guarantees a fun-filled time. One pizza, one pizzone. What's a pizzone? The pizzone. It's back at Pizza Hut. Now get any large pizza for your family and get a pizzone of your own for only two ninety nine. What's a pizzone? It's a big taste in a big folded pizza crust filled with cheese and luscious ingredients like pepperoni or fresh veggies. Everything deliciously sealed inside and baked to perfection. Plus marinara sauce. Just two ninety nine when you buy any large pizza at regular price. No one makes the whole family happy like Pizza Hut. So this is a pizzone. Suzanne Summers. Sure, I'm the sheriff. But sometimes my male deputies don't respect my authority. I don't lose my cool. I just walk softly and carry a big stick. She's the sheriff, and she's got the laughs locked up. Sunday at 6 on TV 68 WSYT. Suzanne <laughs> Everybody, thanks for staying with us here on Grown Man Record Night. This is the place you want to be on a Friday night. Unless you're a communist and you want to uh, interfere with elections, then go do some, some other shit. Go to a club. Go to a kitty. Oh, kitty. No, no, no. Oh, let's just hug it out. Let's hug it out. Just like Bailey, I'm a hugger kitty. I'm a hugger kitty. So, are we doing... So to speak or chip chat? Yeah, let's do so to speak. Okay. You, you said I got had some stuff in there, but well, you said you got you some, had some stuff. But you know what? I'm here and I'm gone. So, uh, for some reason, the town I live in. Well, I live in Winston Salem. You live in High Point, but I live, right. I live in Winston Salem. You're and correct. For so far, for some reason, Winston Salem has been chosen by so many grocery stores to be the place where they they kick off. Yeah, it's it's USA, it's Middle America, USA, not Middle America, but we get, we got the Trader Joe's before anybody, we got the Publix yeah. before anybody, and now we have what's called Lidl. Lidl. Lidl, which is like Aldi. L I D L. Familiar with Aldi? Lidl is like, yeah, it looks like Lidl, but it's Lidl, and it's a German um, store. With a lot of groceries, it's bigger. It's like it's like it's like all the on steroids. They boast a fifty percent less than other local grocery stores tag. Okay. And somebody has told me like, yeah, that's pretty much about right. Okay. They're that much. Cheaper. So, I went there <coughs> looking for chips and soda, of course, okay. and I brought both. Well, I brought one. Um, our good friend uh, Sweet Tea from the program, she sent yeah. us some Just chips. The chip sheet. That we'll do later. Uh, she does our chip sheet, and we do appreciate that. I don't care for that, Kenny. So the first Sorry, thing bro. we'll do for So To Speak, though, is their Diet Cola. Straight up Diet Cola. It's totally marketed to look like a Diet Coke. Sure. So I was like, well, I'm a Diet Coke guy. I'm not Diet Pepsi. I'm a Diet Coke guy. It's a trick for me, like with Diet Coke, this plain aluminum can thing. And um, uh, Coors Light does the same thing. What happens with these plain aluminum cans, when they get cold, they get that frosty look to them. That makes them, it makes them look cold and so, refreshing. So you know this what I mean? is from Lidl. Right? You guys agree with me? You better. I was going to do a taste mm -hmm. test and put a Diet Coke next to it and have you taste them both. You better agree with me. pick one. But I didn't because I can't get my shit together. So we'll just, we'll just try this uh, Diet Push. Cola from uh, Lidl. First we'll say touchdown. What do you think about it? Speaking of Bob James. Yeah, speaking of Bob James. What do you think about it? What do you think about this? Almost a little weird sweetener going on there. At yeah. the very end. It tastes like stevia almost. Where it's like too much sweet. Yeah, it's almost too much. More like a Diet Pepsi than a Diet Coke. Too much artificial sweet. Don't need that. It's good off the top. 
it's got a sharp bite. I, when I first tried it, I liked it. I thought this is going to be a good substitute for Diet Coke. But then after eating it or drinking it with food, you ate it. It didn't work. I ate it. You ate the can. It, and everything. it did not work with food. It, ta it tasted different than Diet Coke. Tastes a little too sweet, a little too artificial for me. Get out of here. It's not bad. If somebody was like, I got a 12 pack of these for a uh, dollar fifty. We did get a dollar. Like fucking two, a. 250. 250 for a 12? Something. That's not bad. That's not bad though. I don't uh, know though. It's not going to live up to. I mean, Diet Coke is Diet Coke. Yeah. And it's got that. You know what I love? is like. It's got a bite. Coke Zero. Nah. It has a bite. Yeah. It has a real cola bite. Okay. It's hard. Um. Some other soda. Oh, what other so uh, Pepsi Max, or now it's called Pepsi Zero Calorie, has that bite. I think Coke Zero has the most cola bite. Uh, straight cola, like too much cola flavor, mm. almost, than anything else, by okay. far. Nothing has as much cola bite, sugar or non-sugar, than Coke Zero. Okay. Uh, in, in, in a regular cola. You said There it. may be some, like... Freddy's Boutique uh, Dick Flavored Cola may have the best of whatever, but I'm talking about like name brand, regular, that you pick up everywhere kind of shit. There's a lot of pussy hanging out in your kitchen. Yeah, it is. Got some kitties in there. Kitties, take They're it. They're enjoying like a ball of paper. Take it easy now. <laughs> I'll intervene. If they're, I have to. they're at that age where it's really fun to watch them. If I have to intervene... Because they do stupid shit, and it's fun to watch them do stupid uh, shit. The big kitty was hugging one of the little kitties, and I took a picture of her. Oh, Lord. And I posted it to uh, Bailey from WWE's uh, Twitter. WWE. Yeah, and her whole thing is, uh, I'm a hugger. And I was like, hey, Bailey, my cats are huggers. Hey. Just begging for a retweet. Yeah. And then we'll get like... A, get one? We'll get like a thousand followers. Okay. And everybody they'll will come put, watch the show. Put us over the top. Over the top. We'll quit our jobs. We'll quit our jobs faster than I've already planned. Or that I've not planned at all. It's up to you. It's the, it's the justice scale waits. I don't ever want to sell records and video games in my own store for a living. Oh I'd rather do uh, I'd rather do the devil's work. This is such a bad idea. <laughs> um do a chip chat. Drinking gin tonight was such a bad idea. Well, we'll, we'll play games later. We'll play Outlaw Golf on Xbox. So, staying with Lidl. Yeah. L I D L. L I D L. And in fact, Winston Salem is one of the first places in the country, in the country, to get a Lidl. Let me tell you what. And we're getting two. I did a, uh, a couple of months ago, I did a. Lidl was announcing, hey, we're going to open, open some stores in the triad. And we're doing this job fair. Okay. And we pay our employees and for real our managers, like, we pay our managers like a shit ton of money. And they do. They'll tell you what they make. It's like crazy money. Okay. Even re regular employees that, I'll, hey, I work at a grocery store, just cashier, like 17 bucks an hour. What? Yeah, it's something stupid. That, that's how they... Okay. That's how, like, um, what's the, uh, not Sam's Club, but the other one? Yeah. What's the other one called? The other one. Okay. What's it called? I know. God damn it. You got it. No. Go for it. <laughs> Start, oh. Stars on 45. Uh, B-O-N always, he'll get me a hot dog from there. Well, they got the good hot dogs. Kirkland is their brand. Oh, my God. Sam's Club. No, the other one. That's Kirkland. No, the other one. That's Kirkland. No, I'm sorry. No. I can't think one. otherwise. Oh, my God. <laughs> What's the big store? The big store. <laughs> Look on the chat. Someone's probably got it. By oh, me. my God. <laughs> Costco. Costco. <laughs> Shane saves the day. Yeah, I'm telling you, I knew someone had it. I God knew someone had it. Damn it. It's too bright in here. Oh, uh, it's too bright in here. <laughs> I always say that. Why do you think I'm wearing These are like welder's glasses. Look at these. You have to you wear these to keep slag out of your eyes. Uh, these welding jokes do anything for anybody? These slag jokes? So, are we doing chip chat? Anyhow, no, no, wait, no, wait. 
I went and get to the job fair for Lidl, right? Lidl job fair. We're like, we're hiring these people. We pay all this money. We pay our manager. Seek Heil. I'm like, oh, wow, that's crazy. Yeah. Show up, and I'm, like, interested. I'm like, hey, what's going on here? Interview the marketing girl for the company. She was so hot. And I only say, <laughs> I mean, like, she was like, drop your microphone hot. When I walked in, she was like, hey, how you doing? I think I just dropped everything off of my shoulder, and I was like, oh, my God. Mm. I said something like, whoops, I'm sorry. Like, I didn't even mean to, like, oh, shit. Because it was such a, like, I'm not kidding. It's not like running into your average every day. Damn, that girl's hot. It's one of those, like, hey, how you doing? Oh, my God. I said it out loud and made a, Uh, it was a big deal. Like like that time you were bass fishing? Yeah. And you were drunk yep. and you walked yep. in the lobby and you yep. <laughs> Damn. Yeah. Like I, it, it was, but she was that pretty, like okay. over the top. Anyway, that's what I know about Lidl. Continue she, on, Did she please. look like St. Pauli girl? <laughs> Brunette, but okay. like. So she wasn't German. My mouth wasn't even working so, right. So <laughs> my, me and my family, we, we did the uh, walkthrough on Lidl and I'll tell you the coolest thing about Lidl when you walk first when you first walk in on the left you get hit by the aroma of the bread and they've got buns and and loaves of bread and me and my family did bread. a walk through of my wake okay <laughs> keep going I'm sorry <laughs> well where they had the loaves they also have this this machine where you can get your you get your loaf sliced for you Jerry's machine and so I brought my daughter over to show her and I I actually talked this woman into getting her loaf sliced. Inappropriate. <laughs> so you just put your loaf in this thing, and it closes, and then this it, these tongs come out and grab it, and then this wheel, this like looks like a pizza slicer, but it's like a hundred times the size of a pizza slicer. This wheel of, of death comes out and like shuck 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 and slices the bread. It's amazing. Anyway. We bought some chips. Okay. And I knew that if I were to hold them out for the show, my wife would kill me. Because mm. I, I I picked the jalapeno brand. Oh, I like jalapeno well, chips. Well, they burn up a butthole, we, but I like them. We now. ate them because yeah. my wife would not let me keep them for the show. But our good friend Sweet Tea, she bought. Oh. She says I went to Lidl and I bought you these for the show. Wow. Okay. Which is the same. Wow. It's kettle. It's a kettle chip. She's awesome. It's a small batch jalapeno flavored kettle cooked. What makes them small batch? Nah, uh, your dad. Get, re- get off your high horse. Tell me about it. I don't know what makes a small batch. Okay. I like that we can see chips and still see Mikey bananas in the show. Ladies and gentlemen. Uh. And I can, I can, I don't know about it. Right over the corner. Now don't destroy the top, because right. you destroyed the top. I don't know what I did. I just opened it. No, but I got something for you, though. Yeah. So it's a kettle chip. It's definitely a kettle chip. These are good. Very crunchy. Very, very crunchy. Very, very jalapeno y. Uh huh. It's really got a lot of everything. I give it a thumbs up. Yeah. Boy, that's crunchy, though. Very crunchy. Holy crap, it's crunchy. If you got any dental work, I wouldn't recommend it. But. If you don't give a fuck or you got a death wish. What? Here's a little inside tip. I've got a death wish. Um. <laughs> These are good. Yeah. Now, let me ask you something. Wow, that's a crunch. What? We put a hurting on chips here on the show. We do. So for us to blow through a bag of chips in a night is no big deal. Blow Even job. for me solo during the week. They call that a blow job. Yep. But, for all you people that save your chips for multiple days, blah, blah, blah. What would you normally do? Who the hell are you? You fold it down. Right? Twice, you twice fold it. Maybe twice fold it. You go for the chip clip. Chip you got, clip. You guys know the chip clip, That's right? That's a super clip right there. Super clip. You guys know, all know that shit, right? Yep. Well, I'll tell you, you can just you can throw that away. You don't what? Need, you don't need your chip clip anymore. What are you going to do? 
The best way to cinch up your potato chips, if you are somebody that uh, keeps things uh, around for a few days, okay. and well, likes to have things fresh. You've piqued my interest. It's the I forgot to give this audio. I'm sorry. What? Nothing's hot? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So. We may or may not have spilled a whole bunch on the floor and we picked no, them up and now we're eating them. But here's what we're going to do. Here's what I'm going to do. This is a way of folding your bag up that's where you don't even need a chip clip. So. So I'm going to do it, right? Steve's going to do it as I. I'm going to put my mic, give, mic down so I can do this. Give him instructions. That's it. So you basically, it says place it on a table and flatten out the bag. You don't have to do all that. Just flat, flatten the top part. You know what I'm saying? Okay, fold the right and left side of the bag toward the middle, allowing the corners to meet at the center, like that guy. Fold the tops so it makes a corner guy. Like an airplane? Okay, now stop. Now, fold the top of the potato chip bag. Uh, that little, the are little, they seeing me? Yeah, the little tip top of the house. You want to roll that Just guy down. Uh, roll it down? Like Three or four iterations. For like some a, reason, they insist on using the word iterations. Like a J? You're Three or four, yep. Okay, now here's the tricky part. Insert your thumbs under the flaps made in step two. Okay. I've and, done that. And invert the flaps over the top edge. What? Okay, look. Insert your thumbs under that flap, and you fold that up, and it, like, See, it like double folds the bag. No, nope, other way. What? Huh? What the fuck are you talking about? Yeah, from that side. Now fold it no, over the top. Over the top. You're under him. Yeah, go over that top. What? No, no, no. Fold the whole thing over. Let's see. You got this guy. I'm sorry. From here, take these flaps, and you like go back over the top. That one's not doing right. No. What are you okay. doing? It didn't make no sense to me. So these flaps, I take these flaps and it doesn't work. <laughs> it doesn't work. It's supposed to, but we, we have a substance abuse problem, so. Let me try it, let me try it. Okay. Well, look, you, you want to see the thing again? You want to see it? No. Look. No. It's, I, was, I got it zoomed in. See that? Yeah. That didn't help me, no. It's supposed to double seal it up. I don't know what they're doing. So if you guys love potato chips like we do... Just eat... Just or, eat the damn bag. Or... No, wait. If you're, if you Wake love up your kids and, and serve them a, a sharing, and then finish the bag. If you love potato chips like we do, and you also love Rubik's cubes, go look up this picture of how to do this, because it's like a potato chip Rubik's cube that we're too stupid and effed up to figure out. <laughs> you guys will love it. We'll hate it. You'll love it. We'll hate it. That's why we're your parents. And we are the ones that impregnated your mom. It's Go write chip. that down. It's a good chip, though. Good chip. Real good chip. Hey, guys, I'd love to say that we really appreciate you, but I, I don't care at this point. Um, and Because um, I'm just about that jug life, baby. Uh, we're going to play some video games and get, keep getting after up here. Thanks for joining us on Grown Man Record Night. Hit up the YouTube, the Facebooks. You, get, you guys do Facebooks? We all do Facebooks. How about that McGregor? You bought that McGregor life, Steve? 
Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. All about the McGregor life. All about the McGregor life. We really do appreciate you, and we'll catch you next time, which will be like, a, not next week, but another one. Here on Grow My Record Night. What's that? Are you on camera? Yeah. That my uh, Captain Beefheart is a, is a promo. Your Captain Beefheart's a promo. Yeah. You're not mic'd up. Is it? No. I'm not mic'd up? No. My Captain Beefheart is a promo copy. Okay. We'll listen to it. We'll see you.